it's easy to advocate a diet, but what I really want to do is I, I want to give people the tools so that they can do it in a simple and painless manner. The effects of plant-based diets don't necessarily translate to plant-based meat alternatives. So because of the limited studies, we don't actually fully know the long-term effects of replacing conventional protein sources in your diet with these plant-based meat alternatives. In this series, we'll explore how innovative technologies and local initiatives are rethinking the way we produce and consume food. Welcome to Future Food, where we explore the food production of tomorrow. To find out more about alternative proteins, I speak to an expert from ASTAR. So how has consumer perception of alternative proteins evolved over the years? Uh, locally in Singapore, if you step into supermarkets, I believe compared to a few years ago, you probably see a lot more brands of uh, plant-based protein or uh, different fermented foods. And, and these are all, I would say, new categories of alternative protein foods. Many of these consumers start purchasing these alternative protein products because they could be more driven by sustainability concerns or, mm. or maybe they just have a certain curiosity. At the end of the day, however, I think when you talk about food, uh, people often want familiarity and it's a, it's a process uh, to get people you know, familiar with this new category of food. But clearly if you talk about like, things like cultivated meat or, or microbial proteins, meaning fermented foods, uh, these have actually not been in existence for so long, right? Like it has been researched for a couple of years, but in the grander scheme of things, it has actually still been uh, you know, only a, a limited number right. of years of work. Uh, so I would say there's still some way to go, both in terms of the, the product attributes as well as in com consumer familiarity. Because, you know, you and me grew up drinking a certain brand, right? Or eating yeah. a certain brand of food. And as you grow up, it kind of remains with you, right? You, you remember yeah. how things taste. Yeah. And you kind of yeah. want, want that thing again. Uh, so I would think like how people uh, accept this new class of foods will take time. So I hope uh, to that end, some of the work that is done at ASTAR and SIFB in uh, understanding uh, consumer sensory behaviour, in understanding how to enhance the nutrition of food, how to make foods at scale uh, cheaper. I think these are hopefully all the initiatives that drive the adoption of alternative proteins uh, in future or at least get consumers more willing to give it a try. In this episode, we take you to Food Plant, where companies can access affordable small batch food production in Singapore allowing innovators to pilot and upscale their food production techniques. To find out more about the work that Food Plant is doing, we meet with the man behind Susty Food. Hi Gautam, nice to meet you. I hear you are the founder of... Susty Foods. Susty Foods, and you've got something special for me today. There we go, baked lentil puffs. So why lentil and how is it different from the other snacks on the market? So firstly, lentils are great for you. They're packed with protein, they're packed with fiber, and they're calorie controlled. Ooh. So if you want something that's healthy on the go, it's the perfect snack for you. They're also better for the planet. Lentils require far less water uh, to grow than any other crop, and they emit less carbon dioxide as well. So uh, they're not just better than other meat alternatives, they're also better than other plant-based alternatives like soy for oh, the planet. Oh really? Wow, interesting. So what is your R&D process like in order to find the desired taste and texture? It was quite a long process. This has been in the works for a couple of years now. So you need to get a few parts right. So we basically take lentil flour, we put it through a line, and then you have puffs come out. So you need to get the parameters of the machinery right, you need to get the formula right, and you need to get the seasoning right as well. Mm. So we've tried this maybe 20 different times. So we've run through 20 different variations of the formulation before we got something that worked well. So what do you think is the biggest hurdle in the adoption of novel foods? I think the number one hurdle will be the taste. At the end of the day, you can pitch someone all you want on the benefits of having a specific kind of food, but if it doesn't taste good, people don't care. Mm. So what trends are you observing in the demands for plant-based and alternative snacks? I think the plant-based space is moving away from hyper-processed to something more recognisable, made with real ingredients. So before this, we had plant meat patties, now we have mushroom patties. So before this, you had protein puffs or vegan puffs, now we have lentil puffs or pea puffs. So people are not just looking for plant-based alternatives, 
they're looking for plant-based alternatives made with real food ingredients. So what are Zasti Foods' long-term goals in terms of sustainability and impact? We want to empower people to uh, cut back on their meat intake and embrace a flexitarian diet but without having to put their diets at the centre of their lives. Mm. So we're looking for that viable middle ground. I don't promote the vegan diet because it's very difficult to maintain. I try to cut back on meat intake and incorporate more uh, plant-forward uh, uh, foods that are high in protein. So that way I can consume less meat. So how did you commercialise your product? So the jump from having a viable recipe to producing commercially, it's a big jump uh, because you don't want to produce a large batch right off the bat. The first version you launch with is just draft. You need to iterate the product many times before you get to taste and product features that are viable. And Food Plant played a key role in bridging this gap because they allowed us to produce small commercial batches that we could sell anywhere, whether it was in supermarkets or online so that we could run this rolling experiment, tweak the recipes multiple times without having to produce a big batch up front. It's like a pilot taste test. Correct. Yeah. Sounds good. Stay salty! After hearing about Susty Foods' efforts at making better snacks, we sit down with the CEO of Food Plant to get additional insights. Hi, Dr. Lim. Thanks so much for having us with you today. Yes, thank you, Lin, uh, for having me here. And um, could you talk a bit more about your process of developing new products here at Food Plant? At Food Plant, we help companies to bring their products from kitchen to the market shelves. So most companies approach us with already a kitchen-tested recipe to be uh, ready for to scale up. And uh, we offer our state-of-the-art processing uh, facilities. And our team of the food technologies will work together with the companies and to help them to optimise their recipes and uh, design the production process and also to look into the uh, food safety parameters to make sure that the product produced will be safe. And we will help the company to go on to the next stage to produce a small batch for testing the market. And uh, this is a very crucial step because uh, this is where they will be able to understand the consumer uh, acceptance of the product and to do more fine-tuning if necessary. Then they will continue with the third stage, which is the commercial production. What are some of the unique offerings and facilities that Food Plant has to offer? At Food Plant, uh, we have 12 processing rooms and each room we have uh, uh, one uh, specialised equipment. Like in this room, this is the retort machine. So this is one of the very popular uh, equipment in our facility here. A lot of companies use this machine to do their uh, commercialization to help them extend the shelf life of their product. For example, we help Fish Soup Paradise to extend the shelf life from frozen for 6 months to a shelf stable at ambient temperature 18 months. We also have a UHD machine uh, and besides, we also have the spray drying and the twin screw extruder. So Dr. Lin, what would you say is the future of novel foods in Singapore? I think it's going to be very exciting. We have a very strong ecosystem with uh, government providing funding to the research institution and the startup. On the consumer side, uh, they are more open to uh, sustainable food choices. And I believe that more and more people will embrace it when they become more uh, accessible and affordable. Thanks for all your insights today and wish you all the best with all your projects here. Thank you very much. To find out more about plant-based proteins, we speak to Jillian, a dietitian from Tan Tok Sing Hospital. So what are the health benefits of plant-based meat? Yeah, so as we know, plant-based diets are strongly associated with lower risk of certain conditions like diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and even certain types of cancer. Um, however, with plant-based meat alternatives, the benefits of plant-based diets may not necessarily translate to these meat alternatives. The meat alternatives themselves have not been very well studied, so we don't actually know the full extent of their long-term effects on health if you were to use these meat alternatives as a replacement in your diet for conventional protein sources. Generally speaking, they are nutritionally quite similar, but plant-based proteins or plant-based meat alternatives rather tend to be higher in sodium content and slightly lower in protein content compared to conventional protein options. 
Right, so in a way it's like just having more vegetables rather than actual actual protein protein or? Sort of. Well, so a lot of the current options that we have on the market are actually quite highly processed, right? They come in the form of burgers, nuggets, and because of that they tend to be higher in sodium, fat and sugar content, overall higher in calories. So they're not necessarily going to be healthier than lean proteins or lean meats, for example. So Jillian, what's the best way to incorporate plant-based meat into your diet? Yeah, I think for those who are keen to do so, you would want to choose the products that are less processed. Generally, that would mean the ingredients list is probably a bit shorter. It looks a bit more like the whole natural form. Um, for example, a bean patty really being just beans, you know, being smashed into a patty or even tofu-based kind of foods. Mm. But other than that, there are also other healthy ways to kind of uh, reduce the amount of animal-based protein you're taking, mainly focusing on lentils, nuts, um, soybean-based products. These will also help you to move away from being so reliant on that. Animal-based proteins can also be healthy. Um, for example, fish, eggs, um, lean poultry, if you remove the skin and fat, those can also belong in a very healthy diet and also diversify your options for protein. Mm. So, would you say plant-based foods will increase gut health or plant-based alternatives? I think if you're incorporating less processed plant-based alternatives together with a variety of foods, it could be beneficial. Having a more diverse gut microbiome comes from having a very diverse diet. Note that's observed with plant-based foods. Um, mainly, we're looking at fruits and vegetables, beans. So a lot of plant-based meat alternatives are actually using beans uh, and maybe products that we may not typically consume as often. So if you're consuming them in the form of plant-based meat alternatives that are less processed, so you're not getting all the additional fat, sodium, sugar with that, and you're taking that together with your otherwise pretty balanced, varied diet, um, that brings in a little more diversity to what you're eating and could then also help to diversify your gut microbiome, which is then associated with quite a few health benefits. So with plant-based food being around for some time now, how would you like to see it grow or change in the future? Hopefully with growing popularity, that means there will be more companies being interested in investing in it, developing a wider variety of products. With more competition, hopefully that also means they're motivated to make more healthy products, shorter ingredients lists, actually lower in sodium, sugar and fat content. Um, and then hopefully then in a few years time or in a few decades time, we might have really good healthy options that are actually plant-based meat alternatives. Mm. Thanks for joining us today as we discovered what goes on behind the scenes to propel food innovation in Singapore. In our next episode, we will take a deep dive to see how fish can be reared in the heartlands. Swim along! I was towards the end of our series. That's all the questions yes. you wanted to ask. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, how, okay, how do I lose weight? Oh, Paul's do you want the this. short answer? The long do one. not put this on the glue first. Very good. So you're a fan of mushroom? I am. I love mushroom.